What's the difference between a sequence and a series? Well, a sequence is a list, and a list is separated by commas, whereas a series is a sum. You're adding up all the terms in that series. That's You're adding them, so sum. But first, let's talk about the notation. So each one of these terms you could call n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals 4, etc. That tells you what term that you're on. Whereas a sub 1, sub means like subscript, a sub 2, a sub 3, that tells you the value of that particular term. So what we're going to do now is we're going to figure out how do we find out a specific term in this sequence. Well, first of all, the question is, is it arithmetic or is it geometric? Now, when we talk about arithmetic sequences, we're talking about are we adding the same thing each time to get to the next term. If it's geometric, then we're multiplying by the same thing each time to get to the next term. So here, what are we doing to get to the next term? It looks like we're adding 2, adding 2, adding 2, adding 2. They call that d equals 2. That's the common difference. So d for difference. Like if you subtract 5 minus 3, you get 2. 7 minus 5, you get 2. But say we wanted to find out what this sixth term is. What we would do is we would start at 3, and we would add 2 once, twice, three times, four times, five times. So why did we add two five times? How come not six? Well, because we were already at the first term three, okay, so we only had to add that difference not six times, but five times. And that's where our formula comes from here for arithmetic sequences. You take the first term, a sub one, plus the common difference, okay, here d, which is two, times n minus 1. n is whatever term you want. So in this case, we wanted term 6. That's 6 minus 1, which is 5. And you got it. So this would be a sub 6 equals 10 plus 3, which is 13, which we, we knew that. But say you wanted to find like a term that was maybe like the 20th term. Well, instead of having to add 2, add 2, add 2 until you got to the 20th term, we could write a formula or a rule to find that. So let's go ahead and do that. So a sub n equals a sub 1, which is 3, plus n minus 1 times d. d is our common difference. Let's go ahead and simplify this by distributing the 2. So we get 2n minus 2 plus 3, and let's combine uh, like terms. So 2n plus 1, because negative 2 plus 3, and so now we have a, a formula or a rule for finding any term. If we want to find that 20th term, we're just going to put in 20. 2 times 20 is 40, plus 1 is 41, and it takes you right to that term. Now, another way to uh, write these rules is instead of writing an explicit formula, a formula that takes you right to that particular term, you can write what's called a recursive formula. And the recursive formula looks something like this. Let me see if I can show you. You start off with telling the person what's the first term in the sequence. In this case, it's 3, so a sub 1, meaning the value of the first uh, term is 3. And then you give them a rule or a formula for finding the next term. Now, there's a couple different ways to do this. One way to do it is to refer to the previous term. So a sub n minus 1, that means one term before the term that you're on, the term that you want to find. And then we're just going to add uh, 2. So for example, if we want to find the sixth term, a sub 6, we would go to the 6 minus 1, which is the a sub 5 term here, the value of the fifth term, and we would just add 2, and we got it. Now, the other way I was uh, telling you that you could write this is, instead of saying a sub n, you could say a sub n plus 1. So that means you want to go to the, the next term, the, the one after the nth term. And so then you would take a sub n, that's the value of the term that you're on, and you would add 2. Either one of these is... Uh, fine, whichever one you prefer. Now, say for example you wanted to add up uh, all these terms, let's say up to the 20th term. How would you do that? Well, let me illustrate here. Say you wanted to add all the numbers from 1 to 100. Well, that would take you a while, right? But look at this pattern. So if you take 1 plus 100, you get 101. 2 plus 99, you get 101. 3 plus 98, you get 101. How many 101s do you think that we could make you know, by adding the numbers from 1 to 100. Well, if you said 50, you're right, because you're pairing them up two at a time, right? So what we have here is we have, there's 50 101s. So if we generalize now and write this as a formula, what we did is we took the number of terms, which was 100, divided by 2, because we're pairing them up two at a time. And then what we do, did is we took the first term, a sub 1, which is 1, plus the nth term, okay, which is the last term, which is 100, and that's how we got 
uh, are 101. So that's where this formula is coming from right here. It's the number of terms divided by two times the sum of the first term and the last term. Okay, a sub n just means the, the nth term of the last term. So going back to this problem over here, if we wanted to add up the sum of the first 40 terms, okay, s sub 40, we know that there's 40 terms. Okay, we're dividing that by two because we're gonna pair them up two at a time. And the first term we said was three, and the 40th term, uh, let's see what the 40th term is. We're gonna put 40 in for here, so that's two times 40, which is 80, plus one, which is 81. And so now we have 20 times 84. Uh, let's see, 10 times uh, 84 is 840. So what's 840 uh, doubled? That's 1,680, and that's the sum of the first 40 terms. Let's take a look at this sequence now. We've got 5, 15, 45, 135, dot, dot, dot. What are we doing to get from this term to this next term to the next term to the next term? Well, here you can see we're actually multiplying by three. And this thing that we're multiplying by each time, this is called the ratio, so R for ratio. And if you're having trouble finding out what that ratio is, just take the number divided by the one before it. Same thing here, 45 divided by the num number before it. And you can see we're getting three, 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 three. Now, if it looks like you're dividing, remember division is really like multiplying by the reciprocal. So if it looks like you were dividing by two, that's like multiplying by a half. Same thing with the arithmetic ones. If it looks like you're subtracting, it's really like adding a negative number. So that's important to keep in mind. So arithmetic, you're adding the same thing. Geometric, you're multiplying by the same quantity. But now let's say we wanted to get an idea about how to find the value of this fifth term here. Well, you can see we're starting at five and we're multiplying by three how many times? One, two, three, four. Now notice that we're on the fifth term, but we only multiply by three four times. So that's where our formula comes from. What you do is you start at the first term, you multiply by the ratio n minus one times. So that's the n minus one power. So if we were to write this as a, a rule or a formula, it would be a sub n equals uh, a sub one times r to the n minus one. Our first term we said was five. Our ratio is three to the n minus one power, and that's your rule or your formula. Now, if you wanted to write it in a recursive manner, you would do the same thing. You would let the person know what term you're starting at, which is five, and then you'd give them a, a rule for finding that next term, next term, next term. Now, recursive formulas are good for uh, computers. You know, a computer can do all these calculations uh, quite quickly, and uh, you can write it like this, where you're taking the uh, n minus one term and you're multiplying by three. So if we wanted to find the fifth term, a sub five, we're taking the a sub five minus one, which is the a sub fourth term, okay, which is this 135, and then we're multiplying by three. Now, if you wanted to find the uh, tenth term, you might not want to keep multiplying by three you know, a bunch of times, so you could just put in 10 for n and find the value of that tenth term. Now let's talk about how do we find the sum. We're switching from sequences to series now. How do we find the sum of, let's just say, the first 10 terms? Well, of course, we could write them all out and then add them up, but if it was like 20 terms or 100 terms, that would take too long. So let's go ahead and figure out the sum of the first 10 terms. We're gonna be using this formula right here, and the first term we know is five, so that's a sub one. We have one minus the ratio, which is three, to the 10th power, because we have 10 terms, all divided by one minus the ratio, one minus three. Now when you work with this formula, you wanna be careful. Some students mistakenly will write one minus three, oh, that's negative two to the 10th power. But you wanna follow the order of operations, you wanna do the exponents first, and then the subtraction. Okay, so you're with me? So let me go to the calculator on this one, and I'm just gonna do it here. You can uh, do it in steps if you want. So I'm gonna do three to the 10th first. I'm gonna do one minus that answer. I'm gonna multiply by five, and then I'm gonna divide by negative two. And that comes out to uh, 147,620. And that's the sum of the first uh, 10 terms. Now notice how this is such a large number. And it's because every time you multiply by three, you know, you're tripling, tripling, tripling. It's growing exponentially. So that's why we're getting into quite a large number uh, quite quickly. Now, another type of geometric series we wanna look at are these ones here where you have an infinite number of terms. See the dot, 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 so it continues uh, on and on and on, as opposed to a finite uh, set of terms. So this is the form we're gonna use for finite, this is the form we're gonna use for infinite uh, geometric series. But the important thing here is, is that when you multiply by that ratio, 
that ratio has to be in between negative one and one. So what happens, you can see I'm multiplying by a half, that's 50, a half, that's 25, 12.5. What is this number getting closer and closer to? Zero, so that means that it's converging, okay? So it's approaching zero and we can sum all those terms up. Now, if we were multiplying by two each time, that would be what we call divergent and it would be going to gradually to infinity. If we tried to add all those terms up, of course it would be an infinite sum. So we wouldn't be able to actually get an exact you know, value for that sum. So here what we're gonna do now is we're gonna uh, use our formula. We're gonna say the sum of an infinite geometric series, it's the first term, which is 100, over one minus the ratio, we're multiplying by a half each time to get to the next term. So this comes out to 100 uh, divided by a half, which equals 200. Remember when you divide by a fraction, it's like multiplying by the reciprocal. Again, sometimes you, know, you may have a problem where it looks like it's getting smaller, right? But it might actually be diverging. Like for example, here's a little trick sometimes that uh, teachers might put on your test. It might be something like this, like eight plus six plus four plus two. And you might say, oh, it's getting closer to zero. But what happens because this is arithmetic, you actually uh, just flew right by zero, right? So you keep subtracting two and eventually this is gonna go to negative infinity. You can't actually find that sum. It's gonna go to negative infinity, right? So it has to be geometric and the ratio has to be between be between negative one and one for it to converge and for you to find the sum. Let's look at a couple more challenging problems. So write a rule for the arithmetic sequence when you're given the third term is seven and the fifth term is 13. So how do we do something like that? Well, let's go over here to our arithmetic explicit formula. And let's take this term here. We know that the value of the third term is seven. So we're gonna call this seven. The first term we don't actually know. And the third term, Okay, that's n equals three, three minus one is two, and the difference we also don't know. Let's take this term here, the fifth term is 13. So same thing, the value of that term is 13. The first term we don't know, but five, which is the term that we're on, five minus one is four, times the difference, which we don't know. So what we have is a system of equations where we have two variables and two equations. So we can solve for a1 and d. So what we're gonna do is, let's go ahead and, uh, subtract these equations. We're going to use the elimination method. So the a1s would cancel out. 7 minus 13 is negative 6. 2d minus 4d is negative 2d. And if we divide both sides by negative 2, you can see that d is equal to uh, positive 3. Now if we put 3 back into either one of these equations, I'll just put it into this uh, top one here, we have 7 equals a1 plus 2 times 3, which is 6. And if we uh, subtract six from both sides, you can see that a1 is equal to one. So now if we put it all back together, we can write a rule uh, for this sequence. We have a sub n equals a sub one, which is one, plus n minus one times d, which is three. And then I like to just kind of simplify this down a little bit by distributing and combine like terms. We have three n minus two equals a sub n. Now you could test it out if you want. You could put five in, for example, 15 minus two, that's 13. You could put three in. Three times three is nine minus two is seven. You know, it checks out and that's our formula for our arithmetic sequence. But for this one, it says write a rule for the geometric sequence given two terms. How would you do that one? Well, same thing, we're gonna to go to our geometric explicit formula. The value of the second term is six and we don't know what the first term is. And we don't know what the ratio is, but we know that second term, so two minus one, n is equal to two, so this is one. Uh, over here we have 162 equals, we don't know the first term, we don't know the ratio, but five minus one is four. So now we have two variables, the first term and the ratio, and we have two equations, we can solve that system. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna divide both sides by r, okay? So now you can see that a1 equals six divided by r, we can put that in place of a1 in the second equation. So we have 162 equals uh, six divided by r times r to the fourth. Now this is really like r to the fourth over one because anything can be written as a fraction. And we can do some uh, cross reducing. One of these r's cancels with one of these r's, leaving a r cubed. If we divide both sides by six, let me go to the calculator on that one. That comes out to 27 equals r cubed, take the cube root of both sides, and you can see we're getting r equals three. Now if we put three back in to either one of these equations, I'm gonna put it over here, we have six divided by three equals a sub one, a sub one equals two. So we have the first term in the ratio, we can write our 
our rule or our formula for any term in the geometric sequence. And if you want to check it out, you can always you know, plug in two, for example, two minus one is one, three to the first is three, times two gives you six, and same thing with the, the next term. Let's take a look at this summation notation. So see this uh, Greek letter sigma here, it kind of looks like an E, that represents the sum. And what you do is you take this number here on the bottom, this is called the index, and you would put it in. So if I put one in, I get three times one is three, plus two is five. Okay, that's our, our first uh, term. Now if I put two in, three times two is six, plus two is eight. If I put three in, that's nine plus two is 11, plus dot, 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 you work your way from one all the way up to 10, you know, in order sequentially like that. So if we put 10 in, we get 30 plus two, which is 32. And what the sigma represents, is, again, is a sum or a summation. It's a series and we're adding up all these terms. But what you can notice here is that, see how we're adding three, three, three? This is an arithmetic series. So to find this sum, we're gonna go over here to our arithmetic series formula. We're gonna take n, which is the number of terms, 10 divided by two, the first term, a sub one is five, plus the last term, which is 32, and we get five times 37, which is 150 plus 35 is 185, and you've got the sum. So this is kind of like a compact, condensed way of writing a series. Let's look at number two. So same idea here. You're gonna start at the bottom uh, index here, k in this case, and you're gonna put two in for k. One half to the second power is one fourth, times two is one half. Say for example we put the next one in three, we get one half cubed which is one eighth times two which is one fourth. Say we put in four, we get one half to the fourth power is one sixteenth times two is one eighth, dot dot dot, right? Uh, until you get to the seventh term, okay? So here what you can see is uh, that we're multiplying by a half each time and we can see that the first term is one half and now all we have to do is uh, figure out how many terms are there from two to seven. Now, a lot of people mistakenly will look at this top number and say, oh, you know, Mario, it's seven. But that's not quite right, because we didn't start at one, we started at two. And another mistake students make is they say, well, oh, seven minus two is five. But there's actually six terms here, because think about it, if somebody says, how many numbers are there from one to five? Five minus one is four, but really you can see there's five terms. So when you're counting the first and the last, when you subtract, you have to add one more. So seven minus two is five, plus one more is six. We have six terms. We know it's geometric because we're multiplying by a half. So we're gonna use this uh, formula right here. So the sum of these six terms, the first term we said was one half, the ratio which was one half, there was six terms, all divided by one minus one half. So let's go to the calculator on this one and let's see what we get. So we have uh, one minus, okay, uh, all divided by, and I'm getting, uh, let's see if I can convert that to a fraction here for us, it's 63 64ths. Okay, let's look at number three now. This one, you can see that it's an infinite, okay, sum, we have a sum of an infinite number of terms here. If we put three in, we have one third cubed, which is 1 27th, times four, which is 4 27th. If we put in four, we're gonna get uh, one over 81 times four, which is four over 81, and dot, dot, dot. Now, what's interesting about this one is it's an infinite, okay, number of terms. We're gonna use this infinite geometric sum formula, but we wanna make sure that that ratio is in between negative one and one, right? Well, you can see that this looks very much like our explicit formula here uh, for geometric sequences, a1 times r to the n minus one. You can see that that ratio is one third, and you can test it out by writing a few terms. But now if we wanna find that sum, we say, okay, four over 27 divided by one minus the ratio, which is one third. So we get four 27ths over one minus one third, which is two thirds. Of course, when you uh, divide by a fraction, it's like multiplying by the reciprocal. We can do a little bit of cross reducing here. Three goes in here once, three goes in here nine times. So we're getting a sum of two ninths. So if you like my teaching style and you wanna learn more about sequences and series, I'm gonna put a playlist right there uh, going over more of these types of problems. I'll see you over in those videos.